yeah, we're going to start the next session. My name is Murray Hebert. I work on the uh, Sumitra Chair for Southeast Asia Asian Studies here at CSIS. We're one of the co-sponsors of the, uh, the uh, uh, conference today with the health team here at CSIS. I'm, I'm uh, honored to be able to introduce our luncheon speaker. It is Danny Russell, who is the Assistant Secretary for East Asia and the Pacific at the State Department. Uh, prior to taking this job uh, earlier this year, Danny was the, um, was the senior director for Asia in the White House. And in that role, he also played uh, very important, uh, had important responsibilities in the, uh, what we regularly call the rebalance to Asia of the United States, which has given us a lot more focus on that part of the world. And especially those of us that work on Southeast Asia are delighted that Southeast Asia is getting more focus. Danny, thank you very much for coming, and uh, please join me in welcoming him. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Murray, and I'm delighted to see uh, Ambassador Gong of Vietnam and some other diplomatic uh, colleagues, as well as U.S. government colleagues here as well, and I've uh, come uh, armed with uh, my asset and ally, Mike Fuchs, the Deputy Assistant Secretary. Uh, it's uh, Marie and to CSIS, um, I'm glad that uh, you're giving me an opportunity to talk a little bit about the importance that the United States places on the Mekong uh, region in Southeast Asia uh, more broadly. And I thank uh, CSIS and all the people here today who are responsible for initiating uh, the, this Greater Mekong Health Security Partnership and for sustaining the initiative since the uh, release of the task force report. Uh, I guess it was just uh, in July. Um, I should stipulate up front, I'm not a health expert. And uh, frankly, there are others on the team, including Mike, uh, who have uh, greater depth and grasp of the details on our lower Mekong initiative, the LMI uh, project. But it was important for me to be here uh, today, notwithstanding uh, the tragic events in the uh, Philippines, which is taking up a great deal of our time. Uh, it's important for us to be here in part because we want to share with you uh, the emphasis that we place on uh, LMI as an initiative and its place in, in our uh, overall policy. As Murray alluded to, and as uh, I think all of you know well, the rebalance, uh, our intensified and sustained engagement in the Asia Pacific region um, is a major element of US foreign policy and a big part of uh, the priorities of the Obama administration. And what sometimes gets lost in the mix is the fact that we have a diversity of interests uh, that are reflected in the wide-ranging engagement that we have in the region that go well beyond our important and traditional uh, role as a guarantor of regional security and regional stability. So, for example, um, my colleagues at, in the State Department and in other agencies in the U.S. government and I are regularly and deeply involved in promoting trade and economic growth in expanding educational opportunities and forging connections uh, among educational institutions uh, in the US and in the region. In building up the multilateral fora and the institutions that, that give uh, structure and consistency to uh, problem solving in the Asia Pacific region, uh, and supporting democracy and human rights directly as a bilateral diplomatic effort, but also by nurturing civil society, by promoting good governance, uh, and by defending the rule of law. Dealing with the threats of communicable diseases, uh, public health, of uh, combating uh, pandemics, this is, a, this is a big part of what we are doing. Uh, our support for public health programs is an important component of our overall strategy in the region. And this is not mere altruism. It is 
at the core of all of the things we're doing is the recognition that working together with partners to protect and to improve the lives of the uh, people in this region is very much in the interests of the United States, particularly given Southeast Asia's tremendous potential for, for growth. Now, clearly anyone who has experienced Southeast Asia in the last decade recognizes that the quality of life in the region has risen dramatically. But of course, there's still millions of people who are uh, living in poverty in Southeast Asia. And there are many countries in the region that are still struggling to build the capacity uh, necessary to cope with a range of development-related challenges. Uh, in terms of the countries in the sub-region, the lower Mekong, Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, Myanmar, I think that it is utterly fair to say that each of these countries is moving markedly in the right direction. Whether it's the tremendous uh, economic opening and reform in Vietnam, whether it is the uh, extraordinary political opening in Myanmar, uh, the, there are really tremendous and positive developments that I, I'd like to talk a little bit about. But we are entirely mindful of the challenges, uh, the development-related and other challenges that each of these countries in the region uh, face. On the, on the positive side of the ledger, uh, one of the drivers of uh, growth and connectivity and development in this part of the world is ASEAN and the development and the evolution of ASEAN as uh, an important uh, center and even driver uh, of the region's multilateral uh, work and its architecture. I just came back recently from uh, Bali and Brunei with Secretary Kerry, who uh, took the president's seat in the US ASEAN meetings in the uh, East Asia Summit in July. Uh, Secretary Kerry traveled to Brunei for the ASEAN Regional Forum and so on. These are venues and these are now institutions that increasingly allow us to tackle both the tough political and security issues on the one hand, um, but also to coordinate and to build out programs on sustainable development, food and energy, security, and the other issues that really if directly affect the lives of uh, the citizens and the prospects for growth uh, in, in the region. And one of ASEAN's own top uh, goals in the effort to build an economic community is bridging the development gap that uh, within ASEAN uh, separates the, the wealthier states of maritime Southeast Asia and uh, the states of the Mekong subregion. So I, again, on the positive side of the ledger, I think we see tremendous opportunities. Um, if you take a moment to think about the alignment of forces right now, um, there really is a significant window of opportunity. ASEAN itself has set the ambitious uh, goal of economic integration uh, by 2015, and as ambitious as it is, is uh, really working with determination toward that uh, objective. The US is deeply committed uh, to the region as a presidential priority, uh, and there's no turning back. Uh, we are serious and determined and committed because, as I said, this is uh, in the best interests of uh, the US in terms of our economic and our security future. Uh, Japan is reemerging as a, a major player, again, in uh, the Asia Pacific and has uh, significantly intensified its engagement and its support and its investment in Southeast Asia. China's phenomenal growth has created uh, big new markets and huge uh, economic and commercial opportunities for the countries. As I mentioned, among the countries themselves, Myanmar has undergone a really extraordinary transformation that ended its isolation and has opened 
the door to uh, possibilities that were really unthinkable just two years ago. Uh, Vietnam, as uh, Ambassador Quang and I have often discussed, uh, is opening in an extremely positive way, including through the very important negotiations on the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the, the TPP. And we're seeing Cambodia and Laos also growing economically and, and looking for ways to create more opportunity and a better quality of life um, for their own citizens. So these, these are a lot of the positive factors in play now in the region. And it's uh, behind the thinking in the United States that sustained and serious uh, effort collectively uh, now can have a, a downstream uh, impact that will make a lasting difference. In terms of the Lower Mekong Initiative itself, uh, the U.S. plays a, a significant role in supporting development in the subregion, including through uh, annual assistance funding, something on the order of almost a quarter billion dollars a year, uh, a large part of which, maybe two-thirds of which, is dedicated to uh, three priorities, health, education, and the environment. And LMI is a major component now of this engagement. And we see it, frankly, as a, as a good new model for tackling many of the challenges, both because it is multilateral, um, but also because it integrates the US government in what we call a whole of government approach, uh, coordinated approach. And what we're trying to do in LMI and through LMI is to create a multiplier effect of capacity building so that we are working with governments to, to boost their own capacity to tackle specific development challenges. Uh, and at the same time, uh, we are complementing it by efforts that will strengthen policy making within the countries themselves. And we think that this convergence of effort has a positive impact on the lives of the people in the region. And we see LMI as a, as a model program for this approach for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, that it has high-level political uh, buy-in and leadership. Uh, Secretary Kerry chairs an annual ministerial meeting with other LMI foreign ministers, uh, as well as with the Friends of LMI. And the last meeting that uh, uh, we held, chaired by Secretary Kerry in Brunei in July, was tremendously positive. It was a genuine give and take. It was interactive. It was substantive. There was nothing pro forma uh, about this. It was for real. Uh, the, in the previous year, in 2012, in November, uh, President Obama himself um, brought together the uh, the LMI uh, leaders and on the margins of the uh, East Asia Summit in uh, Phnom Penh uh, had a chance to get together with them and uh, put their support and imprimatur on the project. Second, as I mentioned, uh, LMI is a whole of government uh, enterprise. Many different parts, just of the State Department itself, uh, and USAID and other agencies, whether it's the Department of Commerce or Defense or the US Geological Survey or Exim Bank and so on. Many other elements of the US government work, coordinate closely with us uh, through LMI to engage in the region. The, the third attribute I'd point to is the fact that uh, the initiative has so much uh, partner country buy-in. This is not an American template that's being uh, imposed on or sold to uh, other countries. Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, uh, Myanmar, Vietnam, at the risk of speaking for my colleagues here, um, these countries are co-owners of LMI. They're fully uh, engaged in it. And uh, each, uh, each of them co-chairs uh, at least one of the, the so-called pillars, the, the areas of, uh, of specialization and work, health, education, connectivity, food and agricultural security, energy security, 
and water in the environment. Uh, this is a, a collaborative effort. Uh, and as you can tell, it's an effort that focuses on issues that genuinely matter to the governments and to the citizens in the region. Uh, and then the last attribute I'd point to is the degree to which LMI also has broader international participation, donor participation, uh, and uh, that's reflected in the creation of the, the sister organization, uh, the quote unquote Friends of the Lower Mekong Initiative. Um, uh, something that was initiated based on the good advice of the LMI partners uh, that brings together not only the LMI countries, but also uh, the major donor countries, those, those countries and organizations that uh, are already engaged, have a role to play, and for whom uh, coordination means greater efficiency, uh, greater impact, uh, like countries like Japan, South Korea, Australia, New Zealand, uh, but also the EU and the uh, Asian Development Bank and the World Bank. So this Friends of the Lower Mekong uh, gives us a framework uh, to collaborate and to coordinate that has paid significant dividends, I think, and, and given a lift uh, to LMI itself. Now, in terms of health, uh, I realize this has been a, a subject of discussion uh, today, this morning, and this afternoon. Um, in the LMI context, we're working uh, with our partner countries on a number of uh, priorities, such as building capacity, uh, coordinating uh, responses to diseases like malaria, tuberculosis, HIV, AIDS, uh, and preventing, for example, the, uh, the use of counterfeit and substandard uh, medications. The CSIS uh, task force report does a great job, I think, of underscoring uh, how vital health security is for, for this region. Uh, and um, I will be interested in getting some of the, uh, the results and the feedback from the conference that you're having today to inform our thinking. Um, I know that uh, one of the topics under discussion is the serious concerns about drug-resistant malaria in uh, parts of Southeast Asia. And that's a great example of the kind of challenge that uh, requires us to coordinate and to collaborate in order to deal with it. From our point of view in the State Department, uh, it, it is very important to us to address health issues here because they relate so directly to a range of other issues that are important uh, to attaining the kind of broad-based growth and development that the sub-region in particular in Southeast Asia more broadly needs and that the United States uh, benefits from. Uh, one aspect is effective cross-border management important in its own right, um, but equally important in preventing the spread of diseases, including uh, pandemics. Food and water security, as I mentioned, an area of, of real focus for the United States and something that uh, Brunei in its uh, host year of ASEAN has put great uh, mind share and, and uh, effort into. Um, this is essential for health in the subregion, particularly uh, in preventing malnutrition. And a uh, third area of focus for us is energy security. Um, energy security in the region is important for, in its own right and for any number of reasons, but it's also absolutely essential for so many of the health-related uh, programs, efforts, and activities. Uh, health service providers need, need power, need electricity. And uh, this and other examples really bring home the uh, connectivity and the interplay uh, between uh, health-related and our uh, other ongoing priorities. LMI, therefore, 
is especially valuable because it uh, creates a, a forum and a mechanism for addressing all of these issues in a cross-cutting way and in a mutually reinforcing way. Um, and I would ask you in your deliberations and your work uh, to make sure that you're also uh, addressing the, the interconnected nature of health and the other development challenges in the region. Um, I want to leave time for some discussion and some questions, and I'd very much like to hear back from you all. Um, but I would just say this. Uh, you know, the bottom line is that improving the health of the millions of people in Southeast Asia is a priority uh, for the United States because it's in the interests of the United States. Uh, and it's an important objective in our overall strategy. Uh, I think that U.S. backed health programs in East Asia and in Southeast Asia in particular have a role in our diplomacy. They have an impact in terms of the attitudes and the perspectives of citizens and governments to the United States, who we are and what we're doing. Um, and they also help us build a strong foundation for expanding uh, global health capabilities uh, going forward. We are convinced, as I said, that the countries in the, the Mekong subregion uh, are ready for and are working for uh, greater economic growth, for an expansion that's going to allow them to share fully in uh, the, the tide of prosperity in the Asia Pacific region. We're going to keep working this, uh, particularly through mechanisms like uh, the LMI, uh, and continue to find ways to support our partner countries in, uh, in addressing challenges uh, and in improving public health, which plays such a big role in narrowing the development gap in Southeast Asia. So, Marie, why don't I, I stop there, and uh, in the, the time we have, and I have to apologize in advance that because of the Philippines uh, management issues, I'm going to need to get back roughly on time. Okay. Let me uh, ask you to moderate and open. Thank you. Open Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much for that uh, very insightful overview of how health fits into the larger US policy in the lower Mekong countries. It was very helpful. Um, and before, it, like um, uh, Assistant Secretary Russell said already that he's willing to take a few questions, but I, also, I forgot to, sorry, Michael, I forgot to introduce <laughs> Michael before. Michael Fuchs, who's a, a Deputy Assistant Secretary for Strategic and Multilateral Affairs in the East Asia Bureau, working with, with Danny, uh, is, is also here to help with answering questions. We have uh, a few uh, senior diplomats from some ASEAN several ASEAN countries. Uh, I don't know if you have any, uh, Ambassador Kuang, you would like to ask a question or make a comment, please? Thank you, and, uh, thank you. Yeah. So I just uh, want to, uh, to offer you some, uh, uh, some uh, the perspective from a, no, from a country in the region, the Elama country. So I have two points to make and one question for you. Uh, point number one, I think I agree on almost all what uh, the, uh, the Honorable Daniel Russell just mentioned about the importance of LMI. Uh, I see it, you know, the imp LMI initiative is very important, at least in three aspects. The first, it's uh, as uh, you just mentioned, this is a major component of the rebalancing. Re 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 and uh, we countries in the region, we believe and uh, we expect that the, on the uh, for the sustainability of the rebalancing, and LMI uh, 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 perfectly fits in, in that uh, sense. And second uh, reason for the importance of the LMI is that the substance uh, of the LMI issue. In uh, LMI, we have uh, six pillars here, as I recall, from the water environment pillar, uh, which co-chaired by Vietnam, the energy education uh, pillars, uh, uh, co-chaired by Thailand, agriculture and food security pillar by Myanmar, health by Cambodia, and connectivity by Laos. So you look at the substance, I think that's very important issues, uh, the critical, the LMI issue is addressing the critical issues of the region. And 
it comes to the third point, you know, the third reason why the, uh, of the importance of the LMI, that because it helps reach out to the least developed areas of the region in uh, ASEAN, as you just mentioned. So it's very important project you know, to, uh, to narrow the gap, you know, development gap between among ASEAN countries themselves. So uh, given that important, uh, importance of the LMI issue, uh, that it comes to my uh, second point, Vietnam, uh, we think that uh, we have the political commitment uh, to work uh, with the United States and other LMI countries and other partners for the success of the LMI. We have the, as uh, uh, I've been brief, um, uh, briefed, uh, uh, but this morning, the distinguished uh, uh, representative of Vietnam, Professor Nguyen Trần Hien just mentioned, we have resources and we have the expertise to work with you on those, all these kind of issues, not only on the, is, on the uh, water environment pillar, but on the issues like the health issue uh, that uh, uh, our, my, our representative just mentioned this morning. And now, the question for you, uh, uh, the Honorable Se uh, Assistant Secretary just mentioned about the coordination work, and I think that's a very important issue, the coordination, and uh, how to improve the efficiency. You know, the, there are a lot of countries, you know, uh, donors' countries, trying to help, but I, I, I think that uh, the issue should be uh, more, uh, more probably dealt with. So my question for you is that should and can the U.S. lead that coordination effort? Thank you. No, uh, uh, Charge de Fair from Thailand, do you want to maybe let you both make a, a comment or ask a question, and then uh, we'll let uh, Danny and Michael answer. Well, thank, thank, you. thank you very much, uh, Sharod uh, from uh, Royal Thai Embassy and the Charge of Affairs. First of all, uh, I would like to uh, express my appreciation for CSIS for organizing this uh, very important topic. And thanks to the Assistant Secretary to, to come in on that. And the, uh, Thailand, as a co-owner of MI, we also attach a, a great importance of the role of the United States in the region. Uh, uh, this is not the question, but then I uh, just want to, to share some, some, some views on that. The, uh, as uh, uh, LMI, Thailand also uh, one of the active members, and then we also uh, uh, have a a lot of cooperation with the United States, particularly in the areas of the, uh, uh, the drug uh, resistant malaria, which is the, we are in the regions are training the personnel and, and also we would try to uh, cooperate with the, this program with the United States. And that's, as I, uh, I would like to also mention that the, uh, uh, the first program under the MOU of trial of cooperation side between the Thailand is international cooperation agency with the USAID last November. This is also will be one of the framework that we will work with the United States regarding the drug resistance of malaria. This is the uh, uh, just just to uh, give some some thought on that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, th uh, thanks to uh, both of you. Uh, I'd like to uh, before turning the floor over to Mike to talk a little more about. Uh, donor coordination and the, our role, the U.S. role in there, the question that Ambassador Gong uh, mentioned. I'd just like to pick up on one point, important point that he mentioned and expand on it. Uh, the fact that the countries in the region, uh, the LMI, the, the lower Mekong countries themselves, have resources, have expertise, and I'd add to that list, have incentive uh, real it's powerful incentives uh, to focus on making uh, progress here. That's one of the uh, hallmarks of the LMI initiative in my experience, that this is not the developing world bringing uh, answers uh, or simply bringing resources. Uh, this is a, 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 an interaction among peers, all of whom have something to offer. And frankly, uh, I think the, that we, the United States, uh, consider that we have uh, gotten as much as we've given. We have learned a tremendous amount. And there is much more work that lies ahead of us in 
tapping into the resources and the expertise of the countries in the region. Well, on uh, donor coordination, I think this is obviously one of the key challenges we face in the region. Is anyone who's uh, attempted uh, development assistance anywhere in the world and then to try to coordinate that assistance knows it's a pretty tough challenge. Um, but obviously, this is one of the things, as Danny mentioned earlier, that after we created LMI, the LMI countries asked for um, to create the Friends of the Lower Mekong as a platform for uh, attempting that coordination. And uh, LMI itself is new. Friends of the Lower Mekong is even newer. Uh, and so it is really just getting going. But as Danny said, I think it has already produced some tangible uh, results, some real substantive discussions amongst the major donor countries uh, in the Lower Mekong subregion. And if you look at the, oh, what the other countries in the region are doing, the ones that Danny mentioned before that are uh, part of FLM, in addition to the United States, Japan, South Korea, Others have their own Mekong, uh, Lower Mekong initiatives already going. And so what we do through the Friends of the Lower Mekong is attempting to bring together those various streams of work and make sure that they are not redundant and that they are as in line as possible with the priorities of the LMI countries uh, themselves. Again, as is the case with development coordination anywhere in the world, this is a very long-term uh, task. But what we've done in the last few years alone is really create the platform to allow that coordination uh, to happen. And you can see it beginning to happen already. Great, thanks. So uh, please, we're going to uh, get a microphone number there, but identify yourself and keep the question or comment short, please. Thank very you. Quick. Jill Gay, What Works Association. I'm just returned from Lao PDR, where one of the major health issues are the unex unexploded ordinances we dropped during, I can see you, you're from the same generation I am, uh, that were dropped during the Vietnam War. And as an Australian colleague of mine from there said, you guys dropped them. What are you going to do to pick them up? Because it's having huge health impacts. And at the rate we're going, it's going to take 100 years. Could we take uh, maybe another one or two questions? Um, uh, please, in back, Param. Param is from Radio Free Asia. Uh, just before you arrived, there was a, a panel discussion on uh, malaria. And most of the participants, I mean, there was near consensus that there was serious lack of coordination in battling malaria, especially drug-resistant malaria. And if I would quote one participant who said, there was too much action, uh, too, much, uh, too many words, less action. And um, uh, this comes against the backdrop of a flurry of programs, actually. There, was a, there is actually an overcrowded uh, field there in terms of donors and participants. Um, uh, fresh from your visit from the region, uh, I remember the East Asia Summit, the leaders themselves addressed this malaria problem and how they're going to come up with an initiative with the ADB to resolve this. Uh, what feedback did you get from the participants there sir, in relation to uh, this uh, poor coordination and how to resolve this? Okay, yeah, why don't, I, why don't I start there? Um, make two basic comments uh, and then turn it over to Mike. One is that uh, we should remember that the LMI is a tool. Uh, it's a platform that we can utilize to uh, get, increase focus, to galvanize uh, interest and in action, and to uh, deconflict and to the maximum extent uh, coordinate in ways that not only avoid redundancies but uh, enhance uh, the efficiencies and the synergies of the programs. But it, at the end of the day, it's nothing more than that. It's a, it's a format and a platform uh, that we can use and we have to bring to it uh, good and practical ideas. Uh, it is not an exclusive venue uh, and part of what LMI does and can do, and for that matter, part of what fora like the East Asia Summit uh, do and can do is to generate a political commitment to share information about national or sub uh, or multinational uh, projects 
and to allow diplomats and experts to ask themselves the questions, how, does this, how is this going to fit together? And that's particularly true in addressing challenges like uh, drug-resistant malaria. Um, and I would say getting the, uh, changing the ratio of words to action is, a, uh, is an objective uh, in all of our enterprises, not only here. With respect to unexploded ordinances uh, in Laos, in, in Cambodia, and Vietnam, uh, I accompanied Secretary Clinton uh, to Laos in 2012 and visited uh, with her a number of projects funded by the United States, uh, getting bo at both uh, the actual uh, recovery disposition and neutralization of the ordinance itself but also programs and projects that deal with the victims uh, who have been injured um, by um, mines uh, throughout the country and, frankly, throughout the region. Uh, this, is a, this is a bilateral enterprise. Uh, this is a responsibility that the United States takes seriously. Um, it, there is no question that there are uh, formidable hurdles there and that progress is uh, far slower than anyone wants to see. But um, our programs are uh, underway. Uh, we have protected uh, the funding for them. And uh, th this is an area of uh, close cooperation between the United States government and uh, the relevant governments, including the government of Laos, uh, as well as an area of cooperation with uh, a uh, large number of non-governmental actors who, who play an important and very valued role. I guess I'll just make one quick comment to reinforce what Danny was saying earlier uh, about addressing the uh, malaria uh, challenge. Uh, suffice it to say, again, on any development issue, coordination is of the utmost importance, but is also incredibly difficult. And so I think that what we are beginning to try to do is address it on multiple different levels. One, obviously, there are bilateral programs that we engage in to try to address uh, the issue in multiple different countries. Two is through uh, fora like the LMI um, with many of the key countries uh, that are affected involved in trying to bring together some bilateral programs, frankly, like we do through USAID and other uh, mechanisms, and expand them into the multilateral uh, uh, forum to make sure that all of the countries uh, potentially affected um, are actually talking uh, with one another uh, about how they can benefit from programs that we're engaged in um, on this issue. And the third, to Danny's point before, is finding where we can uh, get broader political buy-in and support for addressing uh, the collaboration issue. And I think that the uh, announcement of the new initiative through the ADB um, at uh, the East Asia Summit this year is a prime example of that. And we're working with the ADB and Australia and other key donor countries through Friends of the Lower Mekong, but through other venues as well, to again, engage in that effort and try to figure out how best we can coordinate efforts. But we're doing it at multiple different levels. It's not just sort of you know, one mechanism through which we're engaged in this effort. We're almost out of time, but are there any questions on this quadrant? Uh, please, sir. Suli Wong from uh, promoting the quality of medicine in the United States Pharmacopeia. I try to put myself in the boot of the countries in the Mekong region. You know, since the establishment of the LMI, um, those people that we interacted with, they usually pose the question. Uh, from the United States, we have at least, for example, three programs now. USID programs, PMI programs, and now Lower Mekong initiatives. Is there a way that these programs that represent United States to come to the region with a very clear and non-confusing to the country in the region so that they can report and implement in a more effective way to, to the region. That's, that's my, you know, my thought, how you know, these three between USID, PMI, Lower Mekong Initiative can 
you know, uh, effectively coordinate. I'd like to hear from the panel. Thank you. So there's one, one more question. Uh, please keep it short. We can get our speakers to answer. Um, Lisa White from the Mahidol Oxford Research Unit. I'm a mathematician working on malaria elimination strategy. Um, my question is, um, what is um, border management from a healthcare perspective, and how is that different from typical border management? Well, let me start again and turn it over to Mike, if I may. Um, to the first question, uh, the point I'd stress is that uh, we are in the, uh, in the business of seeking balance. And one of the balances that we need to achieve is uh, maximizing the rationalization of efforts on the one hand, while avoiding the bureaucratization of efforts on the other. And so there is room for flexibility. There is room for variation. Uh, USAID is an organization. It's an agency of government with a range of programs and a funding stream. LMI is a very different cre creature. It's, uh, it's a collaborative uh, forum and set of programs, not an agency. Um, we do strive for clarity to the extent we can achieve it, but our, the North Star that we steer by is effectiveness. And we use those programs that we have, including uh, through AID and including, as Mike said, uh, other nations programs. Um, but we use LMI and other uh, mechanisms to try to deconflict and to promote uh, coordination. With response to um, border management, the point I was making is that effective border management is one element in uh, preventing the uncontrolled movement of communicable diseases. And that you can't solve a problem like, the, like pandemics and uh, health-related uh, risks uh, in isolation from the, what I would call the infrastructure of good governance uh, and good crisis management. So we're not talking about uh, reinforced concrete at checkpoints. We're not talking about uh, ID cards with 3D holograms. But uh, we are talking about the ability of the nations in the lower Mekong uh, to understand and to be able to control uh, the flow of people because as people flow, um, so do uh, viruses, uh, bacteria, and diseases. Yeah, and just to add to that, I think that the two points I see in the two questions that we just had um, for, to focus on is the sort of coordination at different places. Right, so one is the coordination of what we're doing ourselves. And I think to Danny's point, LMI has a specific focus, one of which is really to take some of the programs that we are doing, some of the efforts that we may be focused on bilaterally with particular countries and that countries themselves are prioritizing and find ways to make sure that all five countries, or all six countries, including us, are engaged in that conversation or benefiting from it. And so if there's some particular program that's going on in the health realm or the environment realm, one of the things we're trying to do is make sure that we actually invite participants from all six of the countries so that they're benefiting from what are inherently transnational uh, uh, challenges and from whatever work that we're doing in that area. And I think that that speaks to the second issue, which Danny was talking about earlier, which is how overlapping many of the challenges are in the region, right? Um, from anything, you talk about health, to food, to energy, to water, whatever it may be. Um, if you're talking about hydropower development in the region, that's gonna affect obviously energy security, but it's also gonna affect um, uh, water uh, and food security uh, and other issues as well. And so it's making sure that everyone is together at the same table, having a discussion about the interconnected nature of what those issues of those issues um, and LMI in its sort of you know, its foundation its goal is to provide a venue and a platform 
to bring those different conversations together, I think, to your original point about how are we trying to coordinate it. Thank you. Great. Danny, Michael, thank you very much. And we all want to wish you all the best as you uh, tackle the tragedy and try to be helpful in the Philippines. Great. So please join me in thanking uh, our guests. Thank you.